purpose of this Advantage Guide is to help you make better informed decisions as you consider coaching to develop yourself or your team and organisation. There's a lot of very convincing marketing out there that coaching is a panacea for all that ails business and organisation. Your payoff will be you can understand for yourself if coaching is suitable for you and what type or style of coaching might best suit your needs. You'll also challenge some of the common assumptions that you may have been making. The truth is, coaching is not for everybody. And there are very good reasons. Here's the top 10 I hear from clients in reverse order and coming in at number 10, but still a biggie. <laughs> Expensive. Yes, I was a little shocked that this wasn't further up the list. An average coaching engagement can cost you 100 to 400 an hour, and most coaches want you for at least an hour every week. A good coach will cost you 500 to 1200 and upwards per hour, and the guru coaches a lot more. A coach for a senior leader in an organization will charge upwards of 18,000 a year for their services, and that's probably online. So coaching even a cheap coach can become expensive. In fact, if the hourly rate is really low, I know of some coaches who charge less than $50 an hour. Well, then you want to be even more careful. Hiring a decent coach with qualifications, which are important, but not always essential, and experience, which is utterly vital, will cost money and a fair amount at that. For an organisation, coaching appears to be more expensive than training events, but then HR rarely count the cost of having not achieved the objectives after multiple training and educational events. And if I can be so bold, if you don't invest your own hard-earned money in your development, there's a very high chance that you won't follow through. You have to make sure you get a good return on your investment. Coaching is expensive, so make sure that you get a good return on your investment. And you want a guarantee for your coaching. Basically, you want value for money. So how do you work out your return, your value gain for the money you shell out? You need useful metrics for your coaching. So I've written a guide for you on how to ensure that you get a good return on your investment for coaching that you choose. And if it's not the expense, perhaps it's reason number nine. Reason number nine, I'm not senior enough. Business and personal coaching is for more senior people. Leaders in business, you know, the one who have leader in their job title? Hmm. In many organisations, coaching is reserved for the senior leadership of the so-called high potential. So should be getting your company assigned a coach to help you learn how to lead once you get promoted to a senior leadership role. There is the minor detail that it's a little late to prepare to be a leader once you've been promoted, but your model through. They should recognise that coaching for you would be greatly beneficial for the company, but they haven't recognised that yet. Do you actually need a coach then? See, many organisations consider coaching to be reserved for the upper echelons, and sadly, few have a proper coaching or mentoring culture to support you and your development. Many find that coaching actually might not be the best option for you. And that could be true. So read this Advantage Guide and see if this is your best course of action now. Do I need a coach? You'll find the link in the show notes. And if not coaching, perhaps some other form of development. But what's the difference? Well, read this chapter and find out if something other than coaching might be better for you. This guide post compares coaching with mentoring, counselling, managing, and so on. On the other hand, 
if it's not the coaching is for the good people, rather for those that are weak, there's always reason. At number eight, we have I'm good enough. This reason is also known by its subtext. I don't have performance problems. Coaching in many organisations is for people who have problems. A coach is often called to in to help fix the person in some way. And if you don't have problems, why on earth would you need a coach? You've been doing your job for years and get things done. Your boss has no complaints. Your performance review is glowing. In fact, you are one of the better managers in the company. Are you sure about that? The change is the only constant. And what got you where you are today will not get you where you want to go tomorrow. Competition is fierce and there is no such thing as a permanent job. I've got a guidepost for you. Find out if you are motivated to change. And if you should be considering coaching, shouldn't your company be paying for it? You know, number seven, why should you be paying from your own pocket when all the benefit of your increased performance goes to the company? It would be nice if your boss showed you their genuine appreciation for your efforts. And if coaching is right for you, then one way they could show this is to sponsor your coaching. Absolutely. But then perhaps you're not senior enough or not one of the identified high potential. Or perhaps your company doesn't think coaching is beneficial to their bottom line. It is probably right that your company should pay for your coaching. But they get a little scared that once coached, you'll get poached by the competitor and hence waste all that development expense. Incidentally, I charge a lot more for coaching when the company is paying. Why? Because when you don't personally invest in it, there's a much higher chance you won't follow through as enthusiastically. That means more chasing and more of my time spent to keep you progressing. Plus, the company usually expects me to come to your office. More time, more expense. So can your manager coach you? Your organisation may not have a formal coaching or mentoring programme in place, and your manager may or may not be able to coach you. It's helpful for you to understand the difference between being a coach and being a manager. Read this guidepost on comparing coaching with managing and discuss the possibility with your own manager. Or maybe it's your boss who really cares. Coming in at number six, my boss needs coaching, not me. You know that you could do a much better job than your boss. As a leader, they are pretty ineffective and really do need coaching. The thing is, it's not actually your job to fix your leader. I mean, how many times have you tried already? Frustrating, yeah? But don't try to fix your leader. Your job is to add value to them. Take some of their burdens, add to their strengths, and after a while, they'll allow you to compensate for their weakness. Or do you need to add value to your boss? I hear this a lot. Almost every workshop I run, and many of my prospective clients quickly tell me my boss should be doing this. It's probably true. Well, two things you can do then. Number one, share this Advantage Guidepost and special report with them and let them decide for themselves. Number two, read the guide post on building rapport. It's written to help you build rapport with your coach, but it works on building rapport with anyone. If your leader won't change, change your attitude or your work address. But perhaps you can't. Change. They can't change. 
you know that something has to change, but you tried and you just can't change in the way you are supposed to, but just how you are wired. Had your parents sent you to a better school, you would have had the same breaks and chances as the others. And climbing the ladder of success would be easy if you had the talent, but it's too late for that. If you believe that you are hardwired and things really cannot change, you could do with an understanding of neurogenesis and neuroplasticity. You might even be surprised by yourself. If you think you can't change, you really, really need to read this. You can change. In fact, you change daily. You might not want to, but you do. It's possible that you have been misled, that your personality and abilities are fixed. Read this Advantage Guidepost in the links and adopt a gross mindset. But it's okay. I fully understand that maybe other people will look at you with disdain if you try and fail. That means you'd have to talk about it. Number four, I don't like to talk about it. I've always been an introvert, somewhat shy. I know it shocks some people, but I am inside. Being shy and a little withdrawn as a kid, I hated talking about some real problems with my parents or teachers or anyone. I was always a little concerned about what they would think about me if I told them what was really going on inside of me. Maybe it's just me, but there are times when I find it very difficult to talk about what's going on in my head. It feels as if though I'm opening myself up to criticism, and God forbid that they discover that I'm not perfect. So yes, talking about some things is tough, but when your coach cares about you, they don't judge. But surely coaching will dig into those psychological issues you secretly suspect may be lurking deep down inside. At times, my clients have felt like I was the dock in a white coat, probing their mind. On occasion, it's a little like being on the therapist's couch. It can be uncomfortable to open up, but you know that when you do, there's a flood of relief. Perhaps something else would be better for you. I understand. Talking about some things is difficult, especially with a stranger. But perhaps you should better understand the role of a coach and the role of others who could be helping you. Oh, and by the way, all those crazy thoughts and feelings you're concerned about, I'll have them. Just thought that you should know. And that brings us rather neatly to reason number three. Reason number three, coaches are all about soft, fluffy things. If you're still considering coaching at this point, you know some of the discussions you have will be about feelings, especially those life coaching. I mean, what's life got to do with work? Work is business, it's not personal. Coaching should focus only on improving performance at work. Okay, well, first up, feelings are the tangible experiences you have in your body that are the result of neurochemicals being produced in your brain, which are triggered by your thinking. By discussing feelings, a good coach, at least one that understands how the human brain works, can track back to your thinking, change your thinking, and you change feelings. Second, your entire life matters. Consider, for example, how you perform at work when you haven't eaten. Do you get grouchy and snap at people, or when your partner and you have an argument? Oh, and number three, what do you spend your day thinking about whilst you are at work? Or you get to a certain age and find that there's something missing in your life. You're not sure what, but there's something just not there. And some are about driving your performance hard. It's true. 
that a lot of coaches these days are a little fluffy. There are people who still think that the secret is the answer to everything. It's not, I think. Many life coaches fall into the category of being a little fluffy. So choose the sort of coach who you want to work with. It's a great little style indicator assessment you can use linked in the notes to help you know which is best for you. Talking about feelings doesn't have to be sentimental. And guys, that's a weakness. It's a strength to be able to talk about feelings. And then there's the concern, well, if people know I'm being coached, they'll think I'm weak. Reason for not coaching number two, if people know that I'm being coached, they'll think I'm weak. Hmm. My Uncle Alan was a stern ex-army captain, a disciplinarian, no-holds-barred type of man. He loved me deeply and gave me some of the best advice I can recall. He told me, most people don't care about what you're getting up to, what you're thinking. You know why? He asked me. I shook my dumb head. Because whilst you're thinking about what they're thinking about you, they are spending their entire time thinking about what you are thinking about them. Yeah, you might want to rewind or reread that a few times. Uncle Alan continued, but the people who do care about you, the people who love you, well, they do care what's going on inside. Not to judge, but to help if they can. So for those people that perchance do care about you sufficiently to think about you at all, they won't be thinking that you're weak. They'll be admiring you for being braver than them. But then if your boss sponsors your coaching, won't that suggest that your boss thinks I'm, you're weak? Well, it might. But then it also might suggest that your boss thinks that you're great and you could be even better. Read about tall poppy syndrome and the story of the Madras crab. It's linked in the notes below. But in part, you're wrong. Very very few people are thinking about you, except to be thinking about what you think about them. However, there are people whose mission in life seems to be to pull others down, to stop you by fear and other tactics, to prevent you from overreaching, and God forbid that you do better than them. Best advice is to ignore them. Read this guidepost on tall poppy syndrome and the story of the Madras cat. And finally, to the number one reason you do not need coaching, if you've got the time. I'm too busy. You already have too many demands on your time and good coaching requires you to spend more time than just the weekly or monthly hour with your coach. If you really want to improve and achieve success, you'll have to work on it beyond that hour or three. And who has time for that? Maybe you've just started a new job and you're spending more than enough time learning the ropes, scrambling around the organizational politics, meeting new people, and doing a job you're not actually experienced in. You know that your resume said that you were, but you also know the truth. Or maybe you're looking for a job right now and a career coach is going to slow you down. Or perhaps you've just started a new venture and as if starting a business wasn't time consuming enough without making time for personal development as well. Or you have a young baby or your kids need more time now that exams are approaching or your partner is demanding that you spend more time with them. There are a hundred things and a thousand people vying for your attention. You're already stressed and a little overwhelmed. Coaching isn't the answer.
so you want someone who's going to fix your problems for you with a magic wand and quickly because we all have just 24 hours a day which is 168 a week and the only space left is to sleep less but sleeping less is not good for you lack of time is the number one real enemy of you taking on coaching sure Many coaches will tell you that you can do this in just one hour per week, and some of them are not lying. That's why they take 10 years to get you anywhere. Personal change and development take time. There are no secret pills. There are no magic formulae. Your brain can and does rewire. New habits can be formed. Beliefs that limit you take time be overcome. No silver bullet, no quick and easy solution. It will not happen overnight. How busy do you need to be before you realize that you need to change? Yes, I understand that. You're busy and you will continue to be busy. In fact, as you become more successful and the higher up the organization you climb, you'll get even busier. So, number one, check whether you really need a coach. Number two, consider your objectives for developing yourself. And number three, establish clear metrics and work out if your time is going to give you a return on investment. And now it's time to review the 10 reasons that you don't need coaching. The 10 reasons you don't need coaching to summarize and wrap up. To summarize these top 10 reasons people think that they don't need coaching. And if you're still here with me, I'll wrap up with a couple of cost free suggestions if you want to explore further. So here are the top 10 reasons people think they didn't need coaching in reverse order. Coming in at number 10, it's too expensive. The real question is how expensive will it be if you don't change sustainably and develop yourself? And number nine, I'm not senior enough. Well, will you ever get to the seniority level you need to warrant having a coach without having a coach to help you get there? Number eight, I'm good enough. Yes, coaching is often abused to fix people with problem performance, but it is better used to help good performers become great performers. Number seven, the company should sponsor my coaching. Now, the difficulty with company-sponsored coaching is clarity of the company and your own expectations and objectives. Number six, my boss is the one who needs coaching. Well, this is almost certainly true, but learn from tennis champion Arthur Ashe. Start where you are, use what you have, do what you can. And the top five, I can't change. Well, can't, won't, or don't want to change. Number four, I don't like to talk about it. Indeed, talking about some things, especially with a stranger, can be difficult. Maybe it's easier with a stranger. Your coach, though, is not judging you. Mm, their only intent is to help you. Coming in at number three, coaches are all about soft, fluffy feelings. Yes, some are, and they suit certain clients. Some of us are on the more neuroscience, scientific side of things, and robust psychology research. You get to choose the sort of coach you want to work beside. At number two, if people know I'm being coached, they'll think I'm weak. Believe me, the only thought running through their brain is questioning what you think about them. And coming in at number one, I'm too busy. Yes, you are. You want a silver bullet, a magic formula, a quick and easy solution. I'm sorry. They don't exist. 
and please don't fall for the pundits who are flogging them all over the internet. Yes, coaching takes time and good coaching requires you to work between sessions and put things into practice, albeit these action learning or homework are within your current job. Learning takes time, change takes time. Then one day, you'll find things that used to steal your time are almost effortless. Would you enjoy it all? Still here? So either the above reasons haven't put you off coaching or none of these has sent you scurrying off to another website. Or maybe you're waiting for the sales pitch. Okay, no pitch. If you want coaching and you want to talk to me about it, you'll do so anyway. But maybe you still aren't sure. Well, I did write a book to help you, so you don't even have to buy the book. You're very welcome to, of course, and you can find it in the links below. And I'd appreciate it if you did. I am offering you a gift to access my book for free. Part one is all about helping you make a good decision about coaching and who to work with if you do. And all you have to do is follow the links under each of the reasons. But may I recommend that you start here with the whole book. Buy your copy of the book and get yourself unstuck now. If you haven't gone through the chapters and the associated worksheets and the guideposts here, go back to each of these sections and do it now. Remember that applying best practices with discipline and consistency, even if the actual set steps seem trite or obvious, that is what leads to results. Be greatly blessed. Imagination brings a smile up to my lips